Okay, uh, for steady goal number 11, your book is awesome. And for number 12, be careful the college board loves this question. More so in the multiple choice historically. Um, but over the years, they have often asked, um, what are the materials in the Earth's crust? Or what are the most common elements in the Earth's core? Uh, so 12A, um, I don't know if it'll show up on the free response, but they sure have asked a lot in the multiple choice. Um, for 12B, um, this is all rock cycle stuff. I mean, I can try to lecture this, or you can just check your book and maybe look in previous units, but there is a crazy concept. So... If gravity assembled space dust into a huge ball and you could call it a planet, the densest stuff would be at the center and the least dense would be at the outer layers. Gravity sorts things. Maybe you've seen demos where people mix up a bunch of different kind of beans and then you put it in a glass, in a glass fish bowl and you shake it up and all the really dense beans will go to the bottom and the lighter beans will go to the top. You can do this with like... Uh, ping pong balls and golf balls. Um, there's a bazillion demos like this, sorting by density. You can look it up on the internet. Point is that most planets are static and they're just organized by gravity. So all the really dense stuff like lead and plutonium and uranium are going to be at the central core. And then you have these like layers where the very lightest stuff is on the outside. What's fascinating about our planet is that we've got like juicy layers where like our heat is just enough that under certain pressure, those juicy layers develop a crust that's dry on top and then our planet's crust is moving around because water keeps moving and shifting and becoming gas and then because of seasons and the angle of the dangle our planet points away 23 and a half degrees the bottom line is we have this crazy mixing of ingredients so rocks melt into magma the magma comes shooting out of uh, volcanoes and places where the plates are separated so magma rises out um, little material gets broken up by weathering and that little material gets carried by water and forms sedimentary deposits that will eventually turn into rock again so there's all these terms that you should know like what's magma what's sedimentary but the most important thing for you to visualize is rock cycle diagrams. Where's all this stuff going? And there's one we should add. The one thing that your book didn't mention that's fascinating is placer deposits. P-L-A-C-E-R. You may know of Placerville or Placerville, California. Placer deposits are where water carries stuff and then when the water slows down that stuff is left behind those are called placer deposits where water moves very very quickly the only things that are dropped out are huge heavy boulders maybe you know that at like steep parts of rivers it's super big rocks with big gaps in the middle because the water is moving so fast that everything else is carried away and then where the water slows down, you've got like cobblestones, riverbed rocks. And then where the water slows even more, you get deposits of gravel. And then where the water slows down even more, you get deposits of like sand and eventually silt right at the coastline where the water's basically not moving anymore. So these are called placer deposits, stuff that's carried by water. And as the water slows down, you sort that stuff by how heavy it is. We'll talk a little bit more about placer deposits at a later time. So I want you to add that. And if my definition didn't make sense, it's late, it's a Sunday, I haven't been teaching in a while, 
go check uh, the internet, see if you can find a better definition of place for deposits. I tried to stop, but that didn't work, sorry.